Rolf, um, congratulations. And what does the Richard Kirk Career Achievement Award mean to you? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, I think it's nice to be uh, so early in my career to be uh, given a nice little uh, kick up the backside and told to do better. That's what that's what I'm interpreting it as. Um, but uh, no, it's it's uh, you know there, there are those of us in film who do something very specifically creative. I mean, we're the you know in, in there are all sorts of creative people in film, and then there are all sorts of other people, and. Uh, but composers are, among, are authors of their own work. It's an original element contributed to a film. So, uh, and it's also the last thing, and it's also done under extreme pressure, often under extreme pressure. So it's, it's inc an incredible honor to be, given, to, be, to be given, to be singled out when uh, there are so many of us that do this. And, uh, and it's, such a, you know, it's such a specific thing. So it's a, it's a very great honor to be singled out and, and a very kind thing to, to receive. One of the things that's so unique about your work is that you are, you've been given the opportunity to do a lot of films that are sort of somewhat comedy, somewhat drama. You sort of straddle the line in many ways. How big a challenge is that for a composer when you're given that kind of a film? Well, you know, I, I get it quite often. So those kind of challenges, I, I, I kind of think of as the norm. And then every once in a while, I get a film which is a genre film. You know, it is one thing, and it's uh, that's bliss because you start to go, "Oh, this is this is so simple." Um, but I kind of used to this idea that uh, there's a Rubik cube and you've got to solve it. That's very much what I've grown accustomed to in, in my experience of scoring films because of those those multifaceted films of Alexander Payne and Jason Reitman and others. Um, so I kind of grow, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging, it's always challenging, but it's kind of, uh, that's what I think of film scoring for me now as being, it's you sit down with a challenge. One of the things, ironically, that is now among your most popular works is the theme for Dexter on Showtime. Can you talk a little bit about what you were thinking and how you come up with a tune that fits a serial killer? Yeah, no. Um, well, I just did what I was told, and you know, which was, you know, I was given very good direction. I was told, you know, that this, you know, I'd seen the first episode, the pilot episode, so I knew what it was about, and I loved the material, and I loved the sort of the the quality and the very wry humor that uh, exists in Dexter, and I was asked, you know, to make the film, mu the, sorry, make the music, the opening sequence. Uh, a little bit funny, but a little bit dark and a little bit uh, Latin American. So, so it was, it was those elements, and just looking for a wry and slightly twisted, but but also you know slightly uh, melodic and and um, with with the possibility of humour, um, make a melody that does all those things. So it was it was just experimentation really. I came up with two tunes, and they liked the energy of one and the theme of the other. So I then had to sort of like switch them around and crush <laughs> crush the tune in, uh, that I had written into the rhythm and energy of the other and we ended up with the Dexter theme. One of the things that is unique about you I think is also the fact that you're not just a film composer. Tell me what else is coming up for you this year that perhaps has nothing to do with music. Uh, well, I'm, I'm producing a book, a comic book, uh, that a friend of mine wrote and another friend of mine illustrated uh, called Passion's Requiem. And it, uh, that book has a score coming with it. Uh, it's a scored book. Um, and then uh, I'm also uh, developing a couple of theatre projects. Yeah. Oh, what would you say BMI has meant to you in your career? The, the great thing, I mean, the, the great thing that BMI have done for me is, is uh, that the people at BMI have a perspective that no one else in the film industry has. They, they, they have no axe to grind, not, they don't belong to any studio, they don't belong to any production, but they, uh, they, they belong to the composers. That's how, certainly how it feels. So their point of view is, is, is very balanced and very broad. And uh, so when things get dark, you call BMI and they can tell you that things aren't as dark as you, th you, you think. And, that, and they, they quote other fantastic composers who are in exactly the same place. And uh, so it's, it's so reassuring and comforting to, to have people who have that point of view and can inform, uh, inform you of what's going on and, and, and how things really lie.